I ask Ali, do you, do you miss dad? He says yes, and I said, how much do you miss dad? And he's only seven years old, but he's seen the difficulties of life that his answer is of an adult. And he says, I miss dad in the space of the sky. He hopes that he'll grow up to be a captain. But brothers and sisters, this is your donations that Ali's dream of being a captain will come true. This is why we urge you to donate now and make Ali's dream come true. Sponsor an orphan and weave dreams into reality. Give the gift of tomorrow. Sponsor an orphan and watch their world change through their eyes. Embark on a journey through the timeless wisdom of the Holy Quran, exploring its profound impact on our daily lives. Welcome to Her Thoughts on Imam Hussein TV where exclusive discussions inspired by the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as await. Dive into the complexities faced by women today. From challenges in inter-community marriages to the growing concerns of mental health, join us in these empowering conversations as we draw inspiration from the Ahlul Bayt. In the midst of contemporary struggles, we highlight the significance of self-control. Tune in for insights into spirituality, resilience and societal support as we explore diverse topics. Don't miss the opportunity to be part of this enriching series offering exclusive perspectives that shape your understanding. Join us for Her Thoughts on Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala. No one really has gone through that experience and was able to report back what they felt on a sensory level. The believer will see their place and their position in Jannah and they will see that what they're leaving behind in this dunya, in this lower dunya, is nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will promise them and will give them in the afterlife. If I do any good deed and gift it to the soul of a mahroom, Allah Azza wa Jal will send the thawab to the grave of that individual.
every child deserves a nutritious meal, build bonds that withstand time, bring a family together this Ramadan, feed the needy and change lives by donating now. <laughs> yeah, he said he's, he's here by himself. He's got no mother or father. Oh, look at Haiduri here. He's so happy with his story. Uh, last time he smiled like this. Who knows? Brothers and sisters, you can see the excitement here. This child may have a mental illness as well, ADHD or something like that. But here in Iraq, there's nothing to help them. There's nothing to give them service or aid them and assist them through these hard times. And on top of that, he's also an orphan. Brothers and sisters, with your donations, you can give children like this happiness, health and education and give them, most of all, a better future and chance at life. Your support, their strength. Sponsor an orphan and witness the power of compassion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh and welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices. This is a live show. We do take in all of your questions. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask, please send it into the WhatsApp number there below. You can scan the QR code in the corner there. Or if you're watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube, you can put your questions in the comment section. The technical team will send them to me on my handy iPad here. If you'd like to call in, 0202199 if you're in the UK. And if you're outside the UK, you can just use the WhatsApp number below. It's not a problem. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. How are we doing this evening, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, fine. How was your fast, Sheikh? Great, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, mashallah. Sheikh, I'm getting questions coming in already. And before we uh, answer the questions, I always ask you for some advice for the viewers. What would you like to tell them? On this night. Audu Billah Sami and Ali Mina Shaytan or Jim Smilla Rahman or Rahim Alhamdulillah here of Bill Alameen, or Salahala Mohammed and Wali Hutahirin, or Anatullah here at Adam Ajmain. In the coming nights, we are inshallah commemorating the Shahada of Imam Amir al Mumin Ali Ali Salam, and of course uh, to revive and the Hia of the Lal al Qadr. And we have this great dua. Joshan the Kabir, that we recite after each verse we recite or each section. Subhanaka la ilaha illa ant al ghawth al ghawth khalisna min al nar ya Rabb. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla in these nights, blessed nights, to save us from the hellfire. Indeed, we need a true invocation, a true besiege of Allah Azza wa Jalla to save us from the hellfire. Khalisna min al nar ya Rabb. Ya Allah. Ahsan. Quick reminder to all the viewers that the phone lines are now open. You can send in your questions. WhatsApp is there. You can call in if you'd like 0203 
or you can call the WhatsApp number. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube, just put your questions in the comment section and inshallah the technical team will send them to me. Like the questions I have right here. From YouTube, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykhna. Is it permissible to call out to Jesus and Mary for our needs and help and wealth, children, and make dua to them the way we do even with Abu Fadr alayhi salam? Uh, with regards to the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, of course, the Holy Prophet and Al-Bit are the best of the creation. So we've been, we've been guided and advised to uh, ask Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And that's why it's recommended that uh, when you recite a dua, you start the dua after the Bismillah and so forth, that you, you uh, recite with Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad, then mention the dua and the, at the end, end it with Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Inshallah, Hassan. From YouTube, Salaam alaikum Shaykhna. Did the Sahaba give bay'ah to Imam Ali alayhi salam at Ghadir? Uh, I'm assuming they're talking about Abu Bakr, Umar, people like this. Did they give bay'ah to Amir al-Mu'mineen at Ghadir al khub Yes, indeed. Um, everyone gave bay'ah. And uh, even Umar said, Bakhin, Bakhin laka, Abu al-Hasan. Asbahta mawlai, wa mula kulli mu'mina. That you became uh, the mawla of every male and female uh, believer. So they confess in the books of Ahl Sunnah, go back to Kitab al-Ghadir by Alam Amini rahmatullah alayhi. Mm. He brings all the sources of the Ghadir from uh, uh, the sources of Ahl Sunnah. So uh, indeed, all the Sahaba, they gave bay'ah, but of course, in qalabtum ala aqabikum. Don't forget this verse in the Holy Quran that after the Prophet's demise uh, and shahad, they turned against the Prophet's family uh -huh. and uh, uh, they just ignored the Prophet's uh, uh, appointment of Ali alayhi salam. From WhatsApp, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykhna. I was born Muslim, uh, I think we've had this one before, but I lost my way. Alhamdulillah, I came back before Ramadan. This may seem a little silly question, but I find comfort talking to Allah before falling asleep after reciting the verses of the Quran. Is it permissible to talk to him casually or should I stop? I find it has helped me with my insomnia. Of course, we have lots of uh, amal before sleeping mm -hmm. in terms of reciting oh, the Quran, uh, Surah, or some of the du'as. So it's good for the one to speak to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is something, yeah. of course, one should turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in his ah, loneliness, of course. Uh, from WhatsApp, Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhna. Is it permissible to perform taqlid in matters of aqidah, like tawheed or shirk? and only follow the ulama on it because they said so or will Allah accept us to use our own intellect on aqidah? If you go back to the Risala Amaliya or the Islamic law of books of each alim of Shia of al Bayt you'll find in the beginning of the chapter of the Masail they would mention this the very first Mas'ala that it is not permissible for the one to follow as taqlid in usul al din it's not allowed Rather, you have to uh, justify yourself and bring evidence for yourself logically in aqidah, in mm. Allah's oneness, in the, the prophethood of the prophets, uh, Imam of Ahl Bayt, Adlullah Azza wa Jal, the Ma'ad and the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, oh, I follow this individual. If he says there's Imam, then I would follow. Otherwise, you know, if there's no Imam, then I would not follow uh, the Imam uh, path because mm -hmm. this Marja or Alim said, there's no such a, such a thing. So, taqlid in aqa'id is not allowed. Unless one s says, well, um, I'm not that intellectual and able to, like the ones who live, let's say, uh, in deserts and uh, remote areas, no access to internet, no access to information. Then they believe in this alim who is delivering the knowledge of Muhammad al Muhammad alim, and the knowledge of the Quran. So they would follow based on their trust that this individual is, is, is just, is alim, is um, uh, trustworthy when he delivers these aqa'id, for example. That could be somehow uh, accepted because you rely on this alim, but anyhow, uh, you have to make sure that you believe it logically initially with aqil yeah. rather than just uh, taqlid. From YouTube, Salaam Alaikum, Shaykh. Is it possible that Laylatul Qadr occurs on the odd nights of Ramadan? So what if someone starts Ramadan one day early or late? Will they mistakenly think it's the 22nd instead of the 23rd? I remember once it uh, happened uh, here in the UK, mm. I think. Um, so some sentences had six nights yeah. of Qadr. Yeah. 
as a precaution. Yeah. And even Allah. someone who lived in Karbala, he told me that I used to come inside the, the shrine and I used to see every night there's a rafa of Quran, mm -hmm. raising Quran on the head yeah. every night for six nights. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if this happens, then there's some kind of precaution, let's say. And there's no harm in having extra nights of, of ibadat. Why not? Inshallah, you'll get thawab for your sincerity. Thawab for your sincerity. Uh, from Prasana. Salaam, when is Laylatul Qadr? Well, you have the, uh, the eve of the 19th of Ramadan, and then you have the eve of the 21st, and then the 23rd. Of course, uh, in the narrations, they would push towards the 23rd, mostly. Yeah, you understand from the, 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 uh, the, uh, the speech of the Imam, uh, mm. the way he's you know, emphasizing on the 23rd, the, the final night of the Qadr. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhna. Back on Laytul Qadr, can you recommend any du'as for Laytul Qadr? There's, there's loads we recite, Shaykhna. There's... Uh, there's Dua Josh in the Kubi, there's Abu Hamza Thermali, there's uh, even some people do Dua Kumail as well if it's on a Thursday night. Yes, you know, yes. Kumail on. And any other Dua's you could uh, recommend? I mean, the best source to go back to the Kitab and Fatih Jinnah and the section about Layal uh, Qadr, Amal Layal Qadr, you'll find everything there, inshallah. Even there's Salah for it, for the specific night, for each night of the Qadr. Um, from YouTube, Salaam Alaikum Shaykhna. And Sayyid? Salam. Thank you. Did Sheikh Tusi and Sheikh Mufid, as well as Alama Majlisi and recent scholars like Sheikh uh, Bahjit and so forth, say Maghrib is sunset and not waiting for the dark? I've heard one of the ulama mentioning that it's sunset, but most the majority would not accept this um, because the layl is actually after the sunset when the redness of the uh, of the sunset would rise above the head so you would see the redness on the top of the sky that's actually the layl you know to be known that's sunset but the layl the layl is actually to be night to be to be in darkness and not in lightness so um, yes there are a couple of ones who have this opinion but majority uh, would would say that it's the uh, shari night after the sunset from whatsapp assalamu alaikum shaykhna is cussing explicitly at someone's sister who doesn't exist haram? Oh, okay. Shaykhna, sometimes friends amongst themselves, boys especially, they'll say something bad about you know, the friend's sister, but the friend doesn't have a sister. You know, he's only got brothers and so forth. So is it okay to, to you know, say things like that? One should uh, get the akhlaq from Ahl Bayt mm -hmm. in terms of in his speech, in his even jokes, try to use something that's sensible and s something that would show their respect to the others, even if they are friends, very close friends or fam family members, make sure that you do them with, with boundary. Mm. Another one from WhatsApp, Assalamu alaikum Shaykhna. Can I start jeeing before iftar while fasting but finish after it's time for iftar? Ah, okay. Shaykhna, can one go uh, to their wife and be intimate? Before iftar and then, you know, it's completed after iftar. Is that okay? I mean, you have the mustahab of the, uh, mustahabat of the iftar to have with dates, water, for example, to pray first, for example, Maghrib and Asha, for example. So mm -hmm. one follow the procedures, basically. I think it was all talking about intercourse. Uh, this one part of their brother, ancestor, whatever, um, married couples, as soon as you are intimate, as soon as there's penetration, your fasting is void. So please wait until Maghrib Adhan. Uh, from WhatsApp, um, Salaamu Alaikum, Shaykhna. Mm -hmm. May Allah reward you abundantly in this holy one. Thank you very much. Um, oh, it's just a nice, uh, it's just a nice uh, comment saying thank you very much for your hard work and everything, Shaykhna. Um, from WhatsApp, Salaamu Alaikum, Shaykhna. Currently, I attend Quran classes every Sunday at the Islamic Center in Vienna. Which follows the Sunni tradition. The classes are held in the morning from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., followed by a mid prayer. May I join the congregation as uh, of Ahl Sunnah of the prayer if I intend to perform Dhuhr and Asr prayer and recite all that is obligatory for me? Can I use a tissue instead of a turba and perform my sajda on it because I fear of being judged and personally expelled for it? Or would it be better for me to perform the entire prayer at home? I mean, the second option would be better. Yeah, uh, yeah because you can't pray behind somebody who does not have the belief in the wilayah of Ali alayhi salam. Ah, Ahsan. Ahsan. From WhatsApp, Assalamu alaykum, Shaykhah. 
my husband wants a divorce and spoke to the local imam who was t who has told him he can divorce our mar oh, sorry he can dissolve our marriage in one sitting is this correct according to shia fiqh according to shia of al-bayt alayhi salam there should be the presence of two witnesses oh. just witnesses to witness this uh, divorce and then the maulana would recite uh, the uh, the talaq uh, um, and uh, would basically there are conditions for the for the wife also to be in her purity uh, in that in that month in which there were no intercourse so there are conditions you can't just bring them and say Allah talaq and walk off mm. go away no, it has to be with conditions to just within his shahidan adilan and so forth. From YouTube, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Does my salah count if I say the wrong thing in a laqa and then fix it and continue praying? You always fix it. So if you say one of the words, let's say the surah or, uh, or the, uh, the ayah or the, uh, the zikr wrong, you always uh, fix it and correct it and carry on with the rest of the salah. Uh, there's a question here for... So, okay, I thought only Ahlul Bayt knew the true meaning of the Quran from Surah Al Al Imran, verse 7. Some of its verses are defined in meaning. They are the cornerstones of the scriptures, and others are ambiguous. The pre verse at heart eagerly pursues the ambiguities in their attempt to make trouble and to pin down a specific meaning of their own. Only God knows the true meaning. Would you like me to recite the, the ayah? If you have it, yes. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ali Imran verse 3 Nazzala alayka al-kitaba bil-haqq Musaddiqan lima bayna yadihi Wa anzala anzala al-tawrata wal-injil He has sent down upon you, O Muhammad, the book in truth Confirming what, has before, what was before it And he revealed the Torah and the Gospel So he's saying the question here or the, the, the WhatsApp thing he's saying is that I thought only the Ahlul Bayt knew the true meaning of the Quran some of the verses are different, different in its meaning these are the cornerstones of the scriptures and others are ambiguous the perverse of the heart eagerly pursues the ambiguities in their attempt to make trouble and to pin down specific meaning of their own only God knows the true meaning so what's the point in terms of I think they're saying that we're not supposed to know the verses of ambiguity the strange ones or that it has many meanings Maybe this is meant to be a mystery for us to ponder on. That's what the Quran says in the other ayat. Mm -hmm. Go back and ask those who know. When there's a difficulty in, in comprehending some of the verses, mm -hmm. go back to the, to the real uh, representatives of the Islam and the, the real khulafa and the real imams of Ahl Bayt salam, who represent and know the Quran inside out. And ask them. Ask those who knows. From YouTube. Salam yeah. alaikum, Shaykh. Did we consent to exist, or where we eternally, where we eternally and or have always ex existed, perhaps? What is the scheme behind the curtain? Um, we passed through different awalim, different worlds. Uh, previously, we were in the uh, the world of the wombs, alam al arham, and then go back to alam al dar. Uh, uh, you know, the, the world of the atoms or the tiny uh, creatures, in other words. And the Quran mentions about Alam al dar that Allah brought all the creation from Adam till the Day of Judgment, last person mm -hmm. on that day. And he said to them, Alastu Rabbikum? We all said, Qalu Bala. We said yes. So we affirmed and confirmed mm -hmm. that you are the Lord of, of, of the world, Rabbul Alameen. So we gave this uh, consent in Alam al dar just a quick reminder to all our viewers that you can send in your questions via WhatsApp. Question the question. <laughs> the phone number is right there below. You can scan the QR code. Or if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, you can put it in the comment section. Or give us a call. 0203-515-0199. Or call a WhatsApp number if you're outside the UK. Uh, from YouTube, Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. What is the difference between Sayyid and Sheikh? The Sayyid is one who is from the descendants of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through Fatima Alayhi Salaam. And he's Sayyid. Uh, and the, the shaykh is the one who is not a sayyid but because he studied let's say house seminaries and uh, Islamic studies now he wears the turban uh, 
uh, white color, which means that he's a sheikh. He's an individual who can actually recite and, and give lectures or teach and nurture students and so forth. From YouTube, is it permissible to wear a ring on both right and left hand? Yeah, you can do so. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, from YouTube, salam well, Both hands, basically. Yeah. Not just one hand. Yeah, both hands. From YouTube, salam alaikum, respected Sayyid and Sheikh. You had mentioned if one has a choice of saying Ya Ali or Ya Allah during impeding doom, to say Ya Ali. In Al Kafi, the Imam said us to say Ya Allah. What do we do? Please bring the evidence with the hadith and the source. Jazakallah khair. From YouTube, salam alaikum, Sheikh. What if you want to stay absent, stray from lust and romantic lifestyle, and follow the footsteps of the Prophet, Isa alayhi salam? What should you do with your with your wife when she's filled with lust? First of all, to, to stay away, to abstain from having marital relations is I, I if you're married specifically if you're married, um, I think it's totally haram, no, Sheikh. If you yes. have a wife and you refrain from being uh, having intimate relations, isn't this haram? Yes, she has the haq uh, in terms of the intimacy and the intercourse uh, and. The, the Quran says, Be good with them, live with them peacefully. So, one of them, of course, is what is needed uh, you know, as a last halal, shahwa, and so forth. So, here, the view of Isa, and I don't want to be involved in a romantic lifestyle. So Our Sharia is from Muhammad, and he said himself, mm -hmm. So, it's, it's a prophetic sunnah. We have to follow the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the gospel of marriage. فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي If you ignore marriage, then you're not part of this sunnah. Ah, sad. From YouTube, Salaamu Alaikum, Shaykh and brother. Alaikum Salaam. I have been privileged by seeing Laylat Al-Qadr twice in my, uh, it doesn't say dream or life, I'm not sure what it means, but what are the best three wishes should one ask for so that we are prepared if Laylat Al-Qadr is to be seen? It's up to you, but of course, one of the most important hajat is to ask for the uh, reappearance of the Imam Al Mahdi Ajallah Raja Al Sharif. So that's one of the most important idea. Uh, from YouTube, Salaam Alaikum, Shaykhna. Uh, on the day of judgment, while the prophets and imams can intercede, and while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, may make them have status, is it not Allah alone who has the final decision? Allah Azza wa Jalla, of course, He has uh, the ultimate. And the final decision, but he would delegate, as I said before, to Malak al Maut to take the souls, for example. Uh, and other Malaika, they have their own job as well and tasks to do in dunya and, of course, in the Qiyamah as well. From YouTube, Salam alaykum, Shaykh. If Imamat is one of the pillars, do Sunnis go to heaven even when willingly denying the Imamah? We have different types of people on this planet. We have Qasr, Muqassar, and, and Jahid, and Mu'anid. So Qasr, Muqassar, and Jahid. Uh, Qasr is the one who has no idea at all. Uh, like the ones who live in Amazon forests and, and you know, remote areas of the, of the world. They have no idea about at all, about the, the faith, the true Aqeedah. Of course, Allah Azza wa Jalla will test those individuals on the Day of Judgment. Because he's a Rahman or Rahim. Uh, he's merciful, and he's wise. So he would not punish people innocently in their graves, in the, in the uh, hereafter. He would give them another chance on the Day of Judgment. He would test them. Uh, if they pass, of course, they would join Ahlul Jannah, inshallah. Uh, question coming in from WhatsApp. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Yes, if one is intimate with his wife using a, con a contraception, can he divorce her on the same day or next? Like the fiqh of the Ahlul Bayt after using... Uh, after having um, intercourse with uh, one cannot divorce their wife but what if contraception is used i.e. a condom still the condition remains the same I said there's a conditions for divorce that she has to be uh, in her purity mm. in that month uh, so she has to be uh, pure and without intercourse in that month that's mm. one of the conditions of the talaq so it doesn't matter if there's a, using a condom or not, it's still the same. It's in, uh, penetration, basically. Fair. Uh, from right. YouTube, can we enter the bathroom with Quran and Dua written on paper and being kept in the pocket? 
uh, what's wrong with it if you don't actually make that dua or Quran najis? Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it doesn't breach the sanctity of the Holy Quran and the Holy Verses and the dua. Uh, you keep it on your chest, for example, not lower than your chest, where there's uh, impurities are pouring. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Shaykh, we're going to go to a short break. Join us after the break as we continue our discussion here on Ikhlam and Suez. If you have a question you'd like to ask, now is the best time to ask your question. We don't need to know your name. We don't need to know where you're asking from. Simply anonymously give your question, and it can be on any topic whatsoever. It could be about marriage. It could be about traveling. It could be about fasting, uh, praying, uh, charity, business, uh, any topic whatsoever in regards to any marja whatsoever. And inshallah, we'll be able to discuss and answer your questions. You can send your questions via WhatsApp. The number's there below. You can scan the QR code. Or if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, you can put it in the comment section. Or give us a call 0203-515-0199 right after this short break. I have a question regarding keeping pictures Is of scholars. Is it permissible at home? to plant trees by or Was over Islam the established? Graves? based on peace and non-violence. Is it permissible to collect donations for charity projects from Is it permitted to consume canned food imported from non-Muslim countries? Is there an issue for men looking at non-Muslim women? To have your questions answered live, WhatsApp us on plus four four seven four one five zero nine two one five five. For those interested in an Islamic law book by Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Al-Shirazi, Please WhatsApp the Ahqam SOS team at the following number to place your order today. Plus 447415092155. The Islamic law book, available exclusively in hard copy, contains religious questions answered by Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Al Shirazi. Order your hard copy today. Yes, you can order your Islamic law book via the WhatsApp number there below. Just get in contact and say that you're interested in ordering one of the books. Inshallah, one of our team members will get in contact with you and you'll be able to get that book. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu alaikum. Shaykh, we've got more questions coming in. Inshallah, we'll go through them uh, from WhatsApp. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. I wa okay, your program is very informative. I watch it with my whole family, including my 15 and 13 year old sons and my little princess. Assalamu alaikum to the sons and the little princess. My question is regarding our dreams. Do we need to seek interpretations for our dreams for any signs for future? Thank you very much for your questions. I do say a lot of the time that we are not dream interpreters. However, your question isn't about that. Sheikhna, dreams can sometimes have meaning, sometimes they don't. What are the big telltale signs that this dream means something? I need to go see an expert and get this interpreted. Bismillah I mean, it depends on the type of the dream um, that you see. Uh, sometimes like a vain dreams, you know, there's uh, blood in it, for, let's say, and so forth. But it depends on the type of the dream. If you have somebody who can interpret the dream, that would be great, of course. Otherwise, I mean... Um, you can give sadaqa, for example, mm -hmm. just to repel any kind of evil eye. It's, it's, so it's weird, Sheikh, because sometimes um, dreams, sometimes you dream about death, sometimes you dream about life, sometimes you dream about uh, different animals and so forth. I know it's quite famous, uh, a snake in your dream is very bad. Uh, and definitely get that checked into if there's a snake in your dream. But sometimes there's you know, horses, there's elephants, lions. Dogs, cats, sometimes there's family members, there's uh, family members who have passed away who come in your dream and so forth. So it's very, very vague, but there's some things that you need to definitely get interpreted. From WhatsApp, Salam alaikum, Shaykhna. Are Sunnis considered kuffar for supporting Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Muawiyah? And another question do we have to perform wudu before reading Quran? Initially, uh, if you go back to the ulama as Rasal uh, Amaliyya and books, they would not consider them as, as you mentioned, uh, non-believers and um, najis and so forth. Um, of course, the one who is away from Ahl Bayt path, he is deviant. In Qalabtum, the Quran says, you're deviant from uh, uh, the right path. When you ignore Wilay Ali Alayhi Salaam, you're out, out of the right path. As the Prophet says, famous hadith in even the Ahlul Sunnah books, that uh, there will be 73 sects 
all in, in hellfire, na'udhu billah, except one. Uh, and then he says in another occasion that هذا وشيعتهم الفائزون يوم القيامة He and his followers are the winners to Ali alayhi salam. So uh, the only savior path is the path of Ali alayhi salam and the ark of Al-Husayn alayhi salam uh, that saves people from the hellfire. From WhatsApp, Assalamu alaikum shaykhah. Just want to know when you visit Karbala during Arba'een, people do processions and some locals use mics and loudspeakers at a time. They do a lot of Mia and sounds musical like the bass beats, like beatboxing. Is that permissible? Ha, huh? sure. Shaykhna, when you go to Arba'een, I'm sure you've been, I've been also, and inshallah, all you guys get the opportunity to go. We have different muwakib coming, and some muwakib perform sure. As you are very familiar with it, um, it sounds very, very loud, very, very fast and upbeat. Some may even mistake it to be some sort of music or something like that. Is shul acceptable and allowed? I mean, according to the fatawa, the maraj, I have been somebody says that it's forbidden and haram. Mm -hmm. you know, because there's no music or dance included mm -hmm. in it's these. All vocal. It's all vocal, as you said. And it's azafu from Maybe it's something new for us. Uh, but the younger generation would like to see something more, more uh, 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 in terms of Azadari to be more intensive. From YouTube, Assalamu Alaikum Shaykh. How is it possible there are two complete different lives, identities, etc., of the same Imam Mahdi from, say, Hadith, Sunni versus Shia? Okay, so why are there two versions? There is a Sunni version of Imam Zaman, Imam Mahdi, and there is a Shia version. Of Imam Zaman, Imam Mahdi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his rare appearance. As I've said before, the Amawis and the Abbasids worked very hard mm. to uh, uh, distort and uh, produce fabricated hadith mm. on the tongue of the Prophet and even Ahlul Bayt. To make up these hadith so that it backs their own agenda of, of you know, uh, being as a so called caliphs and, and sultans and so forth. Uh, what is important, alhamdulillah, that we all agree as Muslims that there's a savior called Al-Mahdi. Mm. That suffices and that yeah. supports our yeah. uh, uh, evidence that Al-Mahdi, mm. we believe in, actually, he is the one who will be, uh, inshallah, reappearing. Inshallah. And he's from the descendants of Fatima, alayhi salam. From YouTube, is wearing rings on certain fingers forbidden in Islam or makruh? I think Sheikh, is it the index finger? Forbidden, I haven't one? heard. It's usually to be put. In it's most for the, these two. Yeah, these. Or, 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 I mean, this one, basically. There you go. So that's, these two that should be fine. Can we get the camera? Ah, sent. Okay, we're not going to get the camera. <laughs> um, from YouTube, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. How can we increase our Zuhud, I think it's called, Z U H D? Zuhud, the meaning which was given uh, in the narration is that uh, Zuhud uh, means that. Uh, nothing can own you, in other words. So if I have a, let's say, expensive car, mm. I wouldn't be a servant for this car. Ah, materialism. Or, ascent, or I have a, let's say, expensive house, for example, yes. or a business. Mm. I shouldn't be a slave, enslaved mm -hmm. in this business or for this house. Yes. To be free. That's zuhud. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have a castle, but you, you, you can easily uh, uh, um, leave this castle and go to whatever you want, and give it to, let's say, somebody who's in need. Uh, I remember somebody in Karbala, uh, we know them. Uh, he, ha he built a house and he gave it to one of the poor individuals. He just gave it away. Because he was died, he had already a house, but he built another one, and he gave it to somebody for free. So you can see some people have uh, money, but the money doesn't ens enslave them. They have this freedom in terms of uh, taking uh, and making decisions. More questions coming in from WhatsApp. Salam alaikum, Shaykhna. If one has to pray while sitting down, uh, oh, if one has to pray sitting, then do both hands have to be placed on the surface during sajda, or is it fine to use your hand to hold the turba onto your forehead? Ah, okay. So, Shaykhna, someone cannot go into sujood. Mm. So they are sitting on, on, a, on a chair and it's hard for them to stand and go into sujood or it's hard for them to go into sujood whatever so forth is it sufficient that they grab the turba and put it on their forehead like this or do they need a table or something to put both their palms down and go into sujood i mean some ulama would say that you can point towards the sajda mm. uh, 
uh, uh, ima, as they say. And could be some others would be more precocious with this regard. Maybe they ask for Tawbah to be placed or something. You, it depends who you follow, basically. From YouTube, Salaam Alaikum, Shaykh Was Oh, this question keeps coming. Was uh, the marriage of Umar al-Khattab and Umm al-Kalthum consensual, i.e. not forced marriage? There was no marriage. But Sheikh, now would you like to... Uh, I, I think we've answered. Jazakallah. Plenty of times, yeah. From YouTube, uh, I have a Sunni friend who I say need to explain about tawassul we do with the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Sheikh, can you please put some light and I can explain to him. So how do we explain tawassul to our Sunni brethren, even our Sunni... Um, Counterparts, they also believe in tawassul. I've seen many times, especially in Pakistan, uh, the Sunnis, they, they will say, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya, ya Ali, uh, they believe in shafa'a and tawassul and so forth. They do tawassul of their own saints and, and, and scholars and things like that. So, Shaykhna, if I am to try to explain to someone who's not a Shia what tawassul is, how we do tawassul and where does it come from? What is the best way to explain? I mean, the best way to understand the tawassul, go back to the Holy Quran and uh, Surah Yusuf, I think, uh, when the sons of Ya'qub السلام, came uh, asking repentance from their father to, to, to ask Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, I will do istighfar on your behalf. Yeah. So they asked their father, because he was a prophet, uh, a saint, uh, yeah. faithful, ma'asum, to ask Allah Azza wa Jalla for istighfar. It's in the Quran. Mm. Tawassul is clearly in the Holy Quran. So astaghfiru lakum. Find this ayah, inshallah, and read the tafsir. Inshallah. Jazakallah. From, I think it's from YouTube, it doesn't say, maybe WhatsApp. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu alaikum. Will those speakers from Hyde Park Speakers Corner go to hell for making fun of Shiaism, the figure of Imam Ali salam, and Imam Mahdi salam? We initially ask Allah Azza to guide them towards the right path because some of them might be in ignorant and they need guidance. Uh, we've seen this in the past history, recent history and the, and the old history, yeah. that some people used to mock the Imam salam, Allah alayhi, or even the Islam from the non-Muslims, but eventually there was a flashlight, a moment in which they were attracted towards Islam mm -hmm. and Allah Azza wa Jal guided them. So we, they need guidance, number one. If not, of course, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal would do the best he, he, he can. He's, he's Qadr, Qadir Muqtadar. From what Salaam Alaikum Shaykh. I work at an agency and they are sending me to work at a music video. Is this haram? Okay, Shaykh, the person is being sent to a music video to work. It may not be that they are involved in the music video. It could be security, it could be makeup, it could be lighting, it could be filming, it could be um, catering, it could be a, any job whatsoever that doesn't inv involve singing, dancing and things like that. Are they allowed to go to that job? As I've said before, if it's something like was, uh, uh, as, as I've said before, like serving alcohol on the table uh. of someone or serving pork, yeah. Uh, if that is actually uh, some kind of as the Quran says that you, you support and you aid towards indecency uh, or falsehood mm -hmm. that would be of course forbidden so it depends uh, what stage are you in from whatsapp Salaam alaykum, Salaam. after Muharram starts there are two months we, do, we don't go to happy gatherings like weddings is there any basis in this these are the uh, the months of Aza and, oh. and uh, mourning. mourning and grieving. Uh, and we have many narrations with regard to that. Al Bayt used to mourn the, these days and nights, mm. and uh, they would cry and weep as a result of what happened to uh, Imam Hussein and his family after aftermath of, of Karbala and Ashura. Uh, but in terms of initiating the, the Nikah contract, I mean, if you go back to the ulama, you will see that. Um, in some cases, they would allow it mm. if, if it's without uh, joy, celebration and, and joy and so forth, clapping the, and just, just, the just to recite nikah so they can be mm. basically halal to each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to make life easier for them mm. rather than waiting for two months, for example. Shaykh, we've got about seven minutes left. Inshallah. 
and I've got a lot of questions, so inshallah, as quick as we can. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid and Sheikh. Alaikum salam. Did the Imams teach us to randomly flick pages of the Holy Quran and pick a verse randomly for istikhara? Sunni say istikhara is a dua and a prayer. Initially, yes. I mean, in terms of the istikhara, uh, you can ask Allah Azza wa Jal, astakhirullah, mm. and you do that. You give sadaq and you, and you go and do this act, whatever you want to do. In overall, that's initial istikhara meaning as a dua. From YouTube, yeah. is it permissible to lick your lips if they are dry? I guess this is in Ramadan while you're fasting. What's important that you don't uh, put back whatever is wetness that was okay. outside, inside the, the, the tongue. Uh, Salam Sheikh, this is from YouTube. What could we say in our du'as to help them be accepted? As I've said, salawat. start with salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad and end with the salawat. Muhammad wa Muhammad. InshaAllah, from WhatsApp, Salaam alaikum Sheikh. What is your opinion on Shia brothers encouraging sisters to engage in temporary marriage, get, example, to get to know them for permanent marriage? But if the sister do not wish to, brothers judge them by saying that they are not true followers of the Ahlul Bayt and teaching. That's a really good question, actually. That's fair. Sheikh. Sometimes brothers will introduce, they're getting to know someone to get married and so forth, and then you'll say, let's do mut'a so we can be a bit more free and open and so forth. Sometimes the sisters decline, and they're fair to do so. The brothers think, oh, this is not good, this is not the way of the Ahlul Bayt or so forth and, and such like that. Sheikh, what's your opinion? Should we be very flexible with our sisters? If they want to decline, that's fair. Keep within your boundaries. Or no, you're getting to know someone, it's marriage, it's important. You need to get to know them intimately, I mean, in, in great detail, so they should go forward. I mean, if you go back to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah you would see that there's encouragement for establishing a household mm. uh, to uh, get married for, uh, for, for, for your life, for your you know, permanent life, let's say. Yes. That's an initial, initial uh, advice from the hadith of Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah mm. And to have children and so forth. So, and of course, uh, the Quran mentions about the ayah of Umin Ayatihi and Khalaqum and Fusukum Azwaja, Litaskunu, second, they are second for you. So, the permanent marriage is what is required. The, the, the short term is uh, for, for a situation, for somebody who is, in a, is a sh studying and so forth. So, um, try to get married as soon as possible, a permanent mar marriage, and have this great uh, establishment of, of, uh, of family life, insha'Allah. Um, from YouTube, Salaamu Alaikum. How did the population grow so much from Adam alayhi salam and Eve, especially during the time of Adam alayhi salam? Does this make everyone related? Khair. No, of course. Uh, Allah Azza wa in, in a detailed uh, uh, statement that he created uh, uh, two ladies for uh, Adam's sons. So they, get, they got married to those ladies and not to the sisters and brothers, we don't have such a thing at all. Um, from WhatsApp, Salaam Alaikum Shaykhna. Can you share a time where you made du'a and your du'a was granted? Oh, personal question. It's in the heart of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whenever he gives, Alhamdulillah, we say Alhamdulillah. If he doesn't give, then of course, there's a wisdom behind it. Ahsant. From YouTube, Salaam Alaikum Shaykhna Shaykh and Sayyid Alaikum Salaam. Did Imam Ali alayhi salam carry around a turba? You see, as I've said before, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sunnah Mm. is to pray on the sand and the pebble. See yeah, the hadith? The earth, the khak. He prayed in his mosque. What was on in his mosque? Mm. Was it Persian carpet? No. Or, 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 I don't know, European rugs? I don't know, or, or Turkish rugs, for example? I don't know what they pray on, Sheikh. No. They prayed on the sand and the pebbles. And the Sahab, this is what was the way they used to pray. Even we have a narration, I think, from Ahl Sunnah that mm. they used to warm, uh, cool, cool the pebbles the down. Pebble and, yeah, and pray. pray on them. Mm. That was the Sunnah. From WhatsApp, Salaam Alaikum Shaykhna. There are some Shia scholars who are very pro Sunni Khalifas and defend them and say we shouldn't curse them as it's causing sectarianism. And some Shia scholars are openly cursing the Khalifas and cursing uh, and causing sectarianism. Who is right on this day and age and should we cause hatred amongst Muslim brothers uh, or is unity important? Uh, the boundary is, is to go back to Kitab Allah Azza wa Jal. And Ahlul Bayt alayhi Kitab Allah wa Adat Ahlul Bayti. Go back to those two thaqalain and you'll find the answer there. Which one is the right one? Ahsant. From YouTube, how did the Qalain capture and hold back Yajuj and Mawjud so well that to this day they're still trapped? 
this is like a story telling <laughs> and then we have to go back to tafsir of how they built that uh, said and I so I think forth. it was into, yeah. into a cave and then they built a wall and they were trapped yeah. and they will come out uh, at, at the end of times from what's that uh, oh, good question is it okay to be intimate with my wife during the Qadr nights I if mean, they don't fall on a scorpion, I, I haven't right. seen somebody saying no and so forth. But these nights usually, you specify for the du'a. It's only three nights a year. You specify for the du'a and tawassul and besiege Allah Azza wa Jal and invoke Him. And I mean, to start after the, let's say, after iftar and after Maghrib Asha Salah, till Sahar, it's only like six, seven hours. And by the time you try to read and attend the majlis in your center, local center or mosque, by that time, almost a time of suhoor. And then you have Adana Fajr. There's no time <laughs> to waste it. So let's um, spend some time. I mean, mashallah, we had all these nights, you know, to uh, you know, have the pleasure and enjoy and so forth, with going out, you know, friends. But let's spend these three nights at least to yeah, besiege that. Allah Azza wa and to do tawassul to Allah Azza wa Jal. To save us from the hellfire. Khalasna min al nari Ya Shaykhna, a question here from, could you please explain Surah 72, Ayah 18 and provide Dalil? I believe that is Al-Jinn, and I have the Ayah, which allow me to recite it? Please. Bismillah ar rahim وَأَنَّ الْمَسَّجِدَ لِلَّهِ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Correct. And he revealed that the masjids are for Allah, so do not invoke with Allah anyone. Definitely. Okay. The masjid... You cannot bring a, 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 a sanam or idol uh-huh. or bring something else and say this is part of this ibadah, part of the ibadah, as the mushrikeen did in Kaaba. They uh-huh. brought what? They brought the statues yes. on top of the Kaaba, inside mm-hmm. the Kaaba. When Mu'an when mm-hmm. came with the prophets and they demolished all the uh, statues inside yes. the holy city, Mecca and Kaaba as well. Uh, question from YouTube. Salam alaikum, Shaykhna. Can we learn about jinn, their world, uh, to protect ourselves and our loved ones? Um, brother or sister, I don't think you need to be worried about the jinn. They've got their own things to deal with. Uh, but Shaykhna, a lot of people are scared or worried about the jinn coming towards them and causing issues or mischief or, or whatever. Um, what do you have to, to, to say to them? Stick to the du'as of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi wa Sahifa Sajjadiyya, other books of Ad'iyya, Mafatih al-Janan, Muntakhab al-Hassani, Iddat al-Da'i. Ulama compiled lots of Ad'iyya from Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi wa Make sure that you attach yourself to, to these Ad'iyya and recite them every day as much as you can. And you have the Holy Quran as well. The Quran is also a protection for yourself and your family, inshallah. Uh, I think we have a caller on the line, inshallah, we'll be able to get sure. through to them. Assalamu alaikum, Kola, are you there? Wa alaikum assalam, how are you doing my dear respected brothers? I am very Salam. well, Salam. pleasure to hear from you. You are live on Ahqam SOS, the Sheikh is here, please. Your question for the Sheikh. Yes, I just had a question in regards to iftar time. If I go and I do uh, break my fast with uh, my Sunni brothers, and I know they do it about 15 minutes earlier, am I allowed to break my fast with them? Sheikh, any other information you need? Uh, um, and also the prayer time as well, sir. Okay. I'll answer now. Yeah. The Sheikh will answer your question. Thank you so much for your phone call. Tafadl, Sheikh, please. Thank you, my brother. Ahsantum. Uh, no, you have to wait till the Shari time that is specified by the Ulama of Ahl Bayt, alayhi salam. And that's about 15 20 minutes after the sunset. You cannot break your fast or open your fast with the sunset, and you can't even pray. Uh, it has to be uh, after 15 at least or 20 minutes. After the sunset, that's only uh, exception. I mean, you, you you can't really just uh, break a fast, uh, and open it on the sunset because of being with the uh, uh, sunnah, for example. No, that doesn't justify. It. It, it, it would be batal, and you have to be kafara and qada as well. That's intentional break of fast, mm-hmm. and salah and, and uh, you know the salah would be batal as well because so you, you prayed it before the time, the actual time. Yeah, and, and time. Not, not in jama'ah either. Exactly. You can't pray behind them. Final question for this evening, Sheikhna. Salam, Sheikh. Where did the Dhulfiqar sword go after the Battle of Karbala? What happened to it? We have narrations from Ahl al-Bayt that uh, even uh, this, the stuff of Musa, Asa Musa, other books, other uh, 
from the Anbiya السلام, which is left uh, it's with the Imams of Ahlul Bayt السلام, one after one so the one who passes away he would receive yeah. that box of mm. the let's say there's uh, valuables there's uh, by the books Anbiya, like, the, the, the Imama, stuff of, of weapons Musa. of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Safe Rasulullah uh, and the, so forth uh, Musnad Fatima uh, and, and, and a lot more lots of treasures they, they have it indeed or by the Anbiya السلام. thank you very much Sheikh thank you to all of you for joining us on this episode of Ahkam SOS, if we didn't answer your question, we do apologize. We ran out of time. However, myself and the Sheikh will be back. When are we back? I think After it's on the 4th of April. We're going to have a short yes. break for the Istishad of Amir al and for the later Qadr nights. Uh, they will be programming here on Imam Hussein TV 3, so don't worry about that. Live programming, inshallah. Salam ya Ali. But until then, we'll be back on the 4th. Join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. These orphans need your help and require your assistance. Don't let any of these orphans go hungry this Ramadan. Please donate. Don't let this be the end. Keep the hope alive. Seven years. Hey. 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 His answer is of an adult, and he says, I miss dad in the space of the sky. He hopes that he'll grow up to be a captain. But brothers and sisters, this is your donations that Ali's dream of being a captain will come true. This is why we urge you to donate now and make Ali's dream come true. Sponsor an orphan and weave dreams into reality. Give the gift of tomorrow. Sponsor an orphan and watch their world change through their eyes. On me, son. Nice. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mohsin Shah. My name is Abu Talib. And we would like to say thank you to all the viewers and all those who have been supporting the Aitam here in Karbala, whether it's to do with health, medication, education and clothing. Brothers and sisters, we are here in a toy store. We have come to choose and pick so that we can take the toys back to the orphanage and bring the promises that we promised the kids that we're going to bring them toys back with us. 